<clears throat> okay, we're back. My name is Stephanie Grow, and um, this is um, part C of um, day 873 of um, um, Sex Change Sabotage by Dr. Suporn Watanyusako. Okay, so um, the sun's shining through now, so I'm going to try to keep it off my face because if it hits me, then um, it makes seeing the display harder. So, because I'm in the video, so um, okay. So this um. Uh, we're, co we're covering embalmed tissue and how um, I came up with the term embalmed uh, embalming fluid. Um, basically, I don't know. I didn't see Dr. Suporn inject me with um, with anything. I, um, you know, I'm laying down on a on a exam table. I can't really see what Dr. Suporn's doing in between my legs. Um, uh, while at the same time, two nurses are taking um, stitches out of my groin graft area. Um, uh, at least that's what happened during the office visit. Um, so having said that, um, uh, I, I will show the evidence um, uh, proves that um, an, uh, something happened during that office visit and everything seems to be consistent with some embalming fluid of sorts um, and so I call it embalming fluid and so I'm going to go through these um, points here and um, and talk about uh, you know how they show embalming fluid um, the embalming fluid is oil based um, because the toxicity um, continues to spread at two years post-op. Um, many of the medical toxicologists and emergency room doctors I've talked to uh, have have um, have said to me that the the toxicity of formaldehyde um, is uh, processed uh, fairly fast um, by by the human body and. and um, at least that was their argument every time I asked to get a test for uh, exposure to formaldehyde. They uh, told me that it would likely not be uh, a worthwhile test because it wouldn't be in my system. The body would have processed it out already. And they were, they were giving me that uh, response at six months uh, post-operative and onwards. So, I'm here at two years and I'm still seeing, I'm still feeling um, the toxicity spreading and, and um, uh, for me uh, um, the toxicity is a constant 24-7 um, every second of every minute of every day uh, feeling and um, uh, a medical professional could say, you know, well, how does this person know what toxicity is? They're not a doctor. I, I can tell you that um, uh, I didn't start my timer, so I think I should start my timer now. Um, I'm starting a 10 minute timer because I think we already had five minutes. Um, um, so I can tell you a tox toxic feeling is a non-stop feeling it's, it's, if it was a nerve related f uh, pain it would be um, it, would, it would change based on temperature and mobility and those kinds of things and what, the, and how, what um, state of health a person was in uh, all those things can affect, uh, uh, w would affect um, uh, pain if it was nerve-based. You know, there's no tingling. It's a, this is a constant feeling of 
toxicity and um, I don't know how else to say to prove that I'm suffering from a toxic exposure um, but uh, another thing that you can say is um, or I can prove I can prove that um, there's tissue deterioration that's uh, ongoing over a long period of time and it continues to um, I, I've taken photographs um, uh, taken photographs every day uh, for the most part up to about a year and then uh, periodically since then I can show the ongoing progression of um, tissue deterioration which is uh, a result of toxicity so toxic exposure so that's a mouthful um, um, all these things I have to present this information without um, any guy any guy uh, guidance by listeners I have to um, I have to be my own uh, I have to drive this discussion and it's very difficult if, if someone was up here saying uh, you know asking me questions which I, it's possible I could get somebody it would make things easier for me but um, as such I'm just going to go through my um, my presentation um, vascularized tissue of the corpus cavernosum of the urethra it's the erectile tissue around the urethra um, uh, which is preserved uh, in the sex change um, operation by Dr. Suporn that um, um, urethra and, and, and the corpus uh, cavernosum of the penis um, I believe Dr. Suporn preserves that uh, in creation of the clitoris um, or in the formation of the clitoris I, I, because I, I feel hardened tissue down there around the clitoris um, uh, shortly after the exposure uh, on day nine post-op and onwards so um, vascularized tissue um, versus subcutaneous tissue that isn't as vascularized um, is going to in my mind is going to uh, fight uh, toxicity much harder and longer than than otherwise so um, uh, physical examination by a doctor would show that this tissue is much harder than the surrounding tissue of the um, of the groin that it's um, uh, still uh, still alive has blood flow in it um, and um, would be in, in dic would be consistent with an embalming fluid which um, um, which would cause that tissue to be hard. Um, I might need a doctor to confirm that, but um, I challenge a doctor out there to um, uh, to challenge and challenge me on that. So um, I might make a video on 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 why on, on why this supports embalmed tissue. Um, the main the main reason is. Um, because it's vac vascularized and it has more blood flow more blood flow means it's able to fight the toxicity longer and when tissue is fighting toxicity it turns hard um, before it dies so um, yeah that's a mouthful um, okay so no necrosis or infection um, my medical records support that there's no necrosis or infection which would be consistent with the 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 a tissue preservative in a embalming uh, fluid um, uh, the medical records show no fever which would be consistent with no infection um, over here in blue are the items of proof that I have I have a tissue bi biopsy that shows chronic inflammation um, tissue biopsy was of the subcutaneous tissues of the labia and um, I believe chronic inflammation is one of the um, symptoms of chronic toxic exposure um, gradual tissue absorption I've already covered that I have photos that show that um, 
tissue absorption is uh, tissue deterioration. It's the same thing. Um, Self-dissolving sutures that don't dissolve. Um, I have photos that show that the um, the sutures uh, don't dissolve um, upwards of six months post-op. Um, I believe that's indicative of tissues that are not alive but are um, embalmed and um, thus the sutures are not able to dissolve. Um, videos showing a rubbery tissue that has lost elasticity. Um, yeah, I'm basically pulling on my tissue with my hand in the video and showing how it moves and showing that it's not uh, normal. Um, um, so a lot of this stuff is just um, an overall um, outline of how I, sh how I want to show the embalmed tissue and I eventually will show all this with videos and photos um, either on a website or a server somewhere um, that's safe. Um, I did get a formic acid test uh, at four and a half months post-operative um, that was above normal and so um, uh, I did get that test. Uh, it, it still didn't prompt any doctors to do anything for me. Um, so, um, let's see. Um, okay, I have a point over here, but I don't want to get into it. It's um, it's kind of dark, so I, I, I don't want to get into that aspect of it. Um, it's not really needed, but you can read it if you want to, since you have... Um, a picture of the screen. Okay, that's a long enough video. I'm gonna go. Um, I'm gonna end this. It's it's still under 15 minutes, but I'm gonna end it, and uh, we'll start with um, with the. Um, the sabotage part. Um.